cheek. Please don't give me hype. Right cheek, right cheek. Write my name in ice. ice. Real ass, real ass, real ass, real ass. Got this shit from Tina. I'm a here here back with another video um yeah can't believe I'm doing this one because I told myself that I was not going to do this but here I am all right but before we get into this video if you haven't already just take one quick second go down below click that subscribe button once you do that that bell notification button is gonna pop up click that so that you never miss an upload join the club I told myself that I was not going to do a video like this because I thought it was corny but ever since I took the YouTube hustle course from Jayla Corian I have seen so many videos about her course and how she scammed people and other youtubers not talking about her specifically but talking about people falling for um, influencer scams and things like that I'm not aware of these scams because I don't be all up in the blogs and stuff like that and the the drama unless um you know it pops up on my youtube page but i don't go searching for drama so i'm just going to share my experience with the course my feedback and how i feel about the course and i'll also address a little bit of the scammer aspect where people really scammed in the youtube hustle course let's find out i saw this advertisement on my instagram page in june of this year it was scheduled to start at the beginning of july and it was advertised as if there were only going to be a hundred participants like this was specifically for a hundred people and once they reached that number it was going to be capped and i'm looking at a post that jayla posted on june 22nd and it says i'll put it up on the screen as well it says I'm looking for 100 girls who want to start a YouTube channel or have a channel and want to learn how to master their video creation and online influence. Comment below if that's you or tag someone you know. Okay, so I saw that post and I was like, that's me sis, I got a YouTube channel. It's growing organically, slowly, um, but surely. So what can I do to optimize my channel, make it better, have improvements, you know, learn from somebody who has two separate YouTube channels with the hundreds of thousands of followers and subscribers. That's what sold me was the fact that Jayla had two channels, two separate channels that had over a hundred thousand um, subscribers. So I was like, she knows what she's doing. She's doing something right. And it would be dope because it's only going to be a hundred of us and we'll actually get some one-on-one -on -one, and if not one-on-one -on -one, we'll get some small group time with her and the there was a code that you could use um code youtube hustle and you got 50 percent off which took the price down from 99 dollars to 49 dollars so you got half off and i was like 50 dollars for two weeks to talk to jayla i was like this is this is too dope i had to get it so i went on i went clicked the link signed up I was locked in ready to go excited about the course um and then another post from June 22nd that same day says let's turn your content into coins I'm telling all my secrets and helping you develop your social media influence early access only available <clears throat> today and it tells you the code to use or whatever I feel like I had learned as much as I could on my own and the information that I was getting from um other YouTube videos or whatever that they were posting was um, it was beneficial but you know I have a feeling like I got to a point where it was like okay I've reached a um, a block you know what I'm saying like when you get writer's block you know you got a point where you're like stuck you're like what more can I do or what can I change and I'm a visual learner but I'm also a hands-on person so I like to be able to see what I'm doing what I'm supposed to do do it and then also like have help and ask for advice and I feel like a lot of times when people post like how to grow your YouTube channel videos you can't really ask them questions you may not get an immediate response because they have thousands upon thousands of comments and stuff like that and um, again what works for one person doesn't work for everybody else they're just giving you their point of view their story and like I said I mentioned already I assumed it was going to be one-on-one -on -one. that's how it was promoted that we'd have the opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one, even if not with Jayla with some other influencers that she would bring on and a few days later it was posted that there were over 600 people enrolled 
600 is a far cry from 100. That's a lot, okay? That's a big difference. June 22nd is the post that I saw. And then on June 29th, she says, I'm super excited to welcome over 600 influencers and entrepreneurs into my YouTube hustle course, okay? Then, on July 4th, she posts, enrollment is closing. Over 700 influencers and creatives locked in for two weeks. Ah, okay, but she does mention um, in the bottom that um, she will teach you how to brand yourself, how to create banners, thumbnails, edit video content, give you exact steps you need to gain 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours, provide her methodology for getting traction on your content, a community full of support from like-minded individuals. I thought it was dope one that she was providing a community for like other YouTubers who, um, you know, are on the same level as you. You can talk, share ideas, discuss and stuff like that. Um, and the fact that she was giving you inside scoop on how she did things. But again, what works for one person does not work for everybody, but it is good to have that perspective, that insight, that view. Also how to gain your 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. So when I signed up for her class, I was around the low 900s and I was getting close to my 1,000 subscribers. So I was like, okay, so now I need the watch hours because I'm gaining subscribers. But my trouble on my channel is getting people to watch my video for longer than two minutes. So, you know, I don't know. I was like, what's going on? Like, so I was excited to see, okay, she's gonna show us how to edit videos. What can we add to our content? What, um, you know, spice it up to keep people's attention and stuff like that and how to really retain that audience. So I was like, cool, all right, um, it's a lot of people. You know, I was counting her coins. So I was like, if everybody paid $100, this is making money. Even if everybody paid $50, this is making money. She, she made a lot of money off of this. You know, I thought that we would actually be able to talk to Jayla because since it was capped at 100, in my mind I was like, okay, this is gonna be Zoom. Like we're gonna be able to have um, Zoom with her. Um, and get like some personal coaching and even not just from her, maybe some of her influencer friends, you know, to have some one-on-one -on -one time with each of them and say, hey, this is what I did for my channel or, oh, let me look at your channel. Let me check out your videos. Let me see what you're doing. I noticed the price kept going up, so she had that special for $49, then $69. I know some people paid $99. Um, I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> Just because I like to save money, not because I feel like I was cheated. I was interested on how to improve my um, content and not to get subscri subscribers quick. And I grow my subscribers naturally. I don't pay for subscribers. There's no robots. I don't have 7,000 YouTube channels and I just subscribe to myself. But um, yeah, I wasn't trying to like get subscribers quick or anything like that. And I've heard people mention that people who buy classes are lazy, they don't wanna do the work, and they don't wanna do the research. So for me, and I feel like for a lot of other people that were in this course, I wanna put a stop to that. And I feel like that is just rude, disrespectful to the people who took the course because there are people in this course like me who actually have been putting in work trying to build their channel doing a lot of things have been doing research but they haven't been able to found to find certain things and so you come to a source where all the information is gathered so this is a way of um, you know kind of cutting out the middleman and skipping some steps in a sense like all the research is one in one place so I can go here and get it instead of trying to do a, a Google search here and a search here and a YouTube search here and da, 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 da. yes you can find a lot of stuff on the internet but you're saving time by going to one place to, okay here's all the information that you need now there are some people who knew about certain things that we learned about in the course that I didn't know like there was stuff like um, TubeBuddy I didn't know about vidIQ I didn't know about I didn't know what SEO was and how exactly it worked, but through her course, I was really able to hone in on what SEO was and how it works and use that to, you know, help the search engine optimization of my videos. Like, that's just something that I, I didn't know, you know? And I thought I was doing, you know, everything right in relation to it. Like I knew about the title and what's in the description box and then what's in your tag, but I didn't really understand how they all work together. And I was able to learn that from this course. For, pe for the people who say that people are lazy, think about, do you call people who have nannies lazy? Do you call people who have drivers lazy? What about people who have chefs? Or when you order food from a restaurant, 
or the fact that you go shopping instead of making your own clothes that's lazy so you can see it is that way no we are just optimizing our time so instead of doing all the research we pay somebody who's done the research already and then they can present it to us and then how we use it is on us and I did not go into this thinking okay I'm gonna do this and then the next day I'm gonna have 300,000 subscribers no I knew that I was still gonna have that slow and steady growth and pull in the and put in the work unless I have a video that you know goes viral or something <laughs> but this was just me like gathering information so the fact that people say that people are lazy because they take courses and want to skip steps I just I don't believe that and a lot of people saying that are people who don't have YouTube channels or who aren't content creators and blah 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 and since we're on this way I've heard influence there's one in particular but no names will be said but there's one influencer that I follow and you know I still support them but I've heard them say like oh people if you're getting into YouTube and a lot of influencers say this if you're getting into YouTube for money or you want to be an influencer for money you're in it for the wrong reasons like legit right now in this day and time being an influencer is a job that you can have so anytime you have a job you want to make money so what's wrong with that I don't understand like people get into teaching and they say if you're in you can't be in teaching for the money yes I'm in teaching for the money I know I'm not gonna make a lot yes that can't be your sole reason but that's money is a motivation factor for anybody in any aspect so when people say that I just be like eh, no just just stop and then I've heard someone say that when YouTube started out people did not have a how-to they just posted videos da 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 ma'am sir sis bruh okay yes because that's it's new that's what happens when something is new people just jump out there and they do it and then they create a guideline for other people like you can help other people and you can monetize off of that which I don't feel like that's a problem because you're helping you're helping people and you're helping people save time I'll spend fifty dollars to save hours and hours of time doing research don't act like you ain't never been in college or in school and thought about paying somebody to write a paper it saves you time because when you pay for services you create and optimize more time in your life so if you have a nanny you have more time in your life to do things when you don't have to cook for your kids or be around them every single moment when you hire a driver that's more time where you can be in the back of your car sending emails um, editing a video doing something else having a phone conversation having business deals that's more time for you when you hire a chef that's time where you don't have to go shop you don't have to prep you don't have to cook all you have to do is sit down and eat so while they're doing all that you can do other things so I feel like paying for courses and books and things and how to and guides and learning is a way of optimizing your time. You're exchanging money for time. That's basically what you're doing. Time and information. But like I said, you're exchanging money for time and information. So I feel like people saying you getting scammed. No. A scam to me is like when you pay for something and then you don't get what you paid for. Alright, so you get logged into the app. They use this app called Band, which at first was pretty cool, but for the presentation aspect, it is not, okay? Because um, you can host like live videos, but then the chat gets crazy. So the first day, it started on a Sunday, we didn't do anything, which mm, lost somebody there. All right, so the first day we get up there and um, there were 800 plus people in the band group that we had and people start making subgroups like from different locations different cities and i was really like trying to socialize and network with people because i was like you know maybe we could collab you know once the world goes back to normal you know we can collab meet up do some stuff help each other out and i feel like people really weren't on that way people were doing sub for sub now i did participate in this but i wasn't just like some of the people if they sub to me like if I saw somebody's channel like I subscribe to them but as we learned the next day people were losing like 30 subscribers at a time YouTube is a smart machine so YouTube could see that you know we were subscribing to people and they were subscribing to us and it wasn't like genuine so they were taking away subscribers and, we were, and then some people were like got mad or sending messages like yo we need to find out who did this and, da, 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 da. and, and 
I got in the chat one time and I was like, y'all, it's legit because, you know, people were subbing for seven. Like, you got a huge influx of subscribers in one day and YouTube could see that um, it was like sub for sub. YouTube just can tell. Like I said, people were posting links to follow like on IG and on YouTube and stuff like that. And um, Jayla came in and she fixed that like the next day she came in on the video was like y'all don't do that someone in the group had actually created a google doc where you can put your instagram handle you can put your youtube link and then you can go back and look at the document i honestly haven't been back to look at it because i subscribe to a lot of people um already from the challenge and um or from the group so and i've actually been interacting with their content and stuff like that and i was following out of peer support like i said i was already close to a thousand but it would have been cool like there's over 900 people if everybody could get those 900 subscribers if you were like fresh off starting a youtube channel you were already close to um getting your 1000 subscribers and all you need was your watch hours yeah, and then also the first day when people were socializing, my phone was going off. I had to turn off notifications. I was about to delete the app until the day came. But my notifications were popping off. Like, my phone was getting hot. I had to turn. I kept them on at first. So I was like, I didn't want to miss anything. But Jayla wasn't coming up there. So I was like, mm, whatever. I had to turn them off. It was so much going on. And then, like, there were separate group chats and people were creating and stuff. It was too much. I just had to stop. It was that Sunday. And then the first day of class was that Monday and Jayla was over 30 minutes late and at the 30 minute mark then somebody came in and posted like oh we're having some technical difficulties blah 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 and I was like cool I feel like you should have done that at like 7.05 like that was just kind of that was tacky in my opinion but once she got up there, like everybody was excited, everybody was hyped. So, you know, I was excited. I was like, okay, we'll let this slide. And she, I think maybe she was even an hour late. I was, I was annoyed. Cause like, I was taking this class. I was on a family vacation. Y'all seen that vlog when we went to the mountains and the cabins. And you know, I actually took time away from my family during our vacation to participate in this. Nothing really happened the first day. She just kept asking us like what we would like and like what time we want to do stuff what do we what do we want to learn like and what are your goals and stuff like that and looking back she should have already had this planned out more like i feel like if you're having people pay for a class you should have a script it should definitely be more organized the chat during her live videos was super busy and um it was slow it was kind of like watching an ig live video of someone trying to keep up with the comments and i feel like she should have someone moderating because like she would be um on the video but then she'd be looking down like she would say something she'd be like yeah and i um went to the mall oh yeah hey that's right that's right yeah girl uh-huh we're gonna do that and i was just like because mm, i hate when you'll be on live videos and they read the comments and that's what that felt like i was like Ugh. no and the comments would slow down the videos so i had to turn those off and then i wanted to see the comments and i wanted to ask questions so it was just too much she needed another person to moderate the comments and the questions and I feel like if we weren't on zoom it could have been better because I feel like she could have used that app to communicate and use zoom to present like with all the money you made since you could have paid for zoom can you have more than 100 participants on zoom I don't know but you could have paid for some some executive zoom or something like that and so um, as the days went on the syllabus didn't come out until the second day which I thought was sus like this Cause she was like she didn't want people picking and choosing when they what classes they were coming to blah 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 since i pay my money i'm grown i can do what i want so just go ahead and tell me like it doesn't matter like you already have their money like why do you care what classes they come to like at that point whatever you come you come you don't you don't i did get my money's worth from the course because there was a night where she had her friend who also does her graphics and stuff teach us how to use photoshop that was the best class. My husband told me there are Photoshop shop classes um, and tutorials that you can take, or actually like Photoshop like classes you can take that are more than fifty dollars, which is more than what I paid for. So even if I would have just watched that video and just went to that class, I got my money's worth. And I feel like I learned a lot with Photoshop. Like it got me excited. Okay, excited. Have I used Photoshop? No, because there's some easier tools out there. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have a good base I have references and notes that I can go back to 
and I feel like if I needed to use Photoshop, I can't use Photoshop. So I feel like I got my money's worth out of that. I will say the one class that I did not like at all was the class on editing videos. Y'all, that was so ghetto. That class was ratchet. It was slumlord. It was no, it was bad. It was terrible because she had her, it's with her hairstylist, her friend, and he came up there and was editing videos on his phone and like they were like shooting content and then they would, I'm like, first of all, you should have something already edited. We couldn't really see his screen because he had to flip it towards the camera like this to like show edits and stuff. And I was like, I thought you was going to show us how to at least edit on iMovie or like it was some app you had to download and pay for iMovie is free like show us how to do that like that's what people can access and even um windows movie maker maybe it's a new one but when i first started doing youtube i was using windows movie maker but like iMovie like show us how like stuff we can do because iMovie and um final cut pro okay there we go you know show us how you edit your videos jayla like that would have been a lot better but she couldn't do that because on the platform there's no way to share your screen so it would have been better if we were on zoom she could have shared her screen and edited her content because every time she would like turn her computer or something or he would turn his phone it was flipped and we really couldn't um really couldn't get a full grasp of what was going on or what we were trying to see or whatever so yeah and he was editing the video and i was just like bruh like this could have been so much better like we could have had breakout rooms right because you could have a breakout room for people editing on their phone android people editing on their phone iphone people editing on their computer iMovie um final cut pro um i think there's there's other like stuff like you could have breakout rooms for that and then had an expert come in and say okay here's my thing i'm gonna show you how to do green screens transitions i'm gonna show you um, how to do overlays add music cuts splice it together show a reverse slow it down speed it up pick it up you know pick it up uh, uh. you know that could have been a whole nother thing but no we had this ghetto I'm gonna show you on my phone my hairstylist. Mm -mm, that wasn't it, sis. No. I did appreciate the other experts that she has. Like, she had a manager up there, her manager, Brianna. Um, she had a CPA. I took so many notes. That was helpful for me, just like in my personal life. Um, she also had, um, I don't know. I don't think I really like this lady. I don't think she was my cup of tea. Um, I don't remember her name. She did like some motivational speakers like what's your purpose? What's your why? No, I just yeah, I wasn't feeling it and um, Then there were just days where Dale just seemed like um, all over the place But I was still able to like glean stuff from like what she was presenting because I'm the type of person like I'm gonna get something out of it Like I'm not gonna leave empty-handed um, but I was able to get information like there was the day where she was like all over the place about like setting up like your studio where you record that's what inspired me to put this background up here in my little recording corner in my room so overall I feel like I got my money's worth and I learned a lot of information and stuff that I needed to know and motivation um, to continue on this influencer track but I feel like I learned a lot from this course and I think it was beneficial was it a scam Yes and no. I just feel like it wasn't advertised properly. If she knew that she was going to accept more than 100 people from Jump, then I feel like she should have said that. Um, but I feel like everything that she laid out that we would learn, you were able to learn. And I think a lot of people who have qualms or issues with the course are people who like, they. there were people in there who had like 2,000 subscribers, you know, thousands of subscribers and this is not what they needed. They needed more of a master class, like one-on-one -on -one type stuff. And um, was this everything that I needed? No, but I feel like I learned a lot. And I feel like this would have been really beneficial for those who were like really fresh starting a YouTube channel or um, like who had zero subscribers or who were just like, you know, really small trying to, you know, gain traction. And I feel like I'm not the biggest YouTube person or whatever, but you know, I feel like I know a lot and I'm, you know, I've learned a lot in my time just being here on YouTube. So I think some ways that this course can be improved, because from what she was saying, it sounds like she's going to do it again. I think there needs to be a better app. Um, 
something like Zoom, especially something where you can share your screen, where you can have multiple hosts and people can kind of come in and out and you can kind of control like who's talking. Um, definitely have a moderator in the chat to answer questions and pull out those questions. Because I've seen, my husband works from home and I've seen him on Zoom, like they have like school-wide meetings with hundreds of people and their videos are muted, muted, but there's somebody in the chat that's going through saying, okay, here's a question. This is the question that's presented by so-and-so. Definitely a smaller class size. I really wish like an influencer, like I wish JLo would offer something that's more one-on-one. -on -one. Like even something that's a hundred people that's more one-on-one, -on -one, I feel like that would be more beneficial for someone like me or any other influencer like Raven Elise, I would love to like her to like look at my videos and tell me like about my content and how I can edit better and what I can do. Yeah, there's like a lot of information. I feel like that would be helpful to kind of like, oh, I can actually go to your channel because you can't go to over 900 people's channels in two weeks. It's not possible. I don't even see all the channels that I subscribe to on a regular basis, you know what I'm saying? It would have been better to have like more people on board with Jayla. Um, I know that would have cost more money, should have spent more money, but I feel like that would have been more beneficial. Like somebody actually going to your channel or you're telling this person, I have this video that I'm editing, I'm gonna send it to you. What do you think I should do? Or like if we're on Zoom, I can share my screen and say, hey, this is this video that I'm editing. What do y'all think? Like I said, have all the syllabus, flyers, everything ready to go beforehand. It should be no last minute like, oh, I'm sending over the graphics now or this is going up now. Like we didn't get the syllabus until we had already been in class for three days. Having everything set before a launch date and like even like your speakers, I feel like she didn't have everybody nailed down. And I feel like that motivational lady was like a last minute throw in. I had never heard her before. Um, but I feel like she was a last minute throw in because maybe somebody backed out or somebody hadn't solidified and that's why she couldn't put, out, couldn't put out the syllabus at first. But have all your stuff locked down. And if you can't have it locked down, I would definitely say I'd rather you push back to the date and have it you know, all together than have like a mishmash, mishposh, whatever. I already mentioned like different breakout rooms for different levels and maybe even offer different courses for different levels. Like I feel like this was a beginner course, have an intermediate course, have a more advanced course. It just it just needed some improvements. It wasn't terrible. If this is my first class like this that I paid for, so it wasn't terrible, but there were definitely some areas of improvement. This is her first class. You know, I'll cut her a little break. So for me, big takeaways from this is Everybody who pays for a class is not lazy. They're smart, they're paying money in exchange for time and information. Everybody who wants to be a YouTuber to make money, that's okay. Jayla Corian, I feel like she did not scam us. It was a little bit misleading initially, but as she went on, she changed her information and updated it to cover her butt, I guess. And I think it's okay to pay for a course like this. Like, this is the real tea, y'all. I think it's okay to pay for something like this to get your information, like I said, to save you time. You're really saving yourself time, and that's okay. I feel like some YouTube dropper are just, just hating because they didn't think of the idea. I've heard people say you're paying for stuff that you can search on Google. Yes, you can, but instead of searching on Google, going through articles and spending that time, I can pay for pay some money and it's done. Now, everybody got the same information, but has everybody applied it the same way? No, it's up to you on how you apply it. So I feel like I've learned information, I'm applying it, I'm doing it, I'm growing it. And there's also free information that I've got. I watch Raven Elise all the time. She posts a lot of videos on how to grow your YouTube channel, how to do different stuff, blah, 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 growth, blah, 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 blah. And I've learned stuff from her and there's things that I got from her that I implement for free. There's things that I pay for it that I implement. So, and the information that JLo was given, I haven't seen for free anywhere. Maybe I didn't look hard enough, but that's why I paid for it, to get it. But yeah, that's my take y'all. I don't feel like I got scammed. I feel like a lot of people posting these videos um, saying that they did get scammed or doing it for clout, doing it for views, doing it for clicks, doing it for watches. And then people bringing in like her personal life. That has nothing to do with it. That's, that's shady. The fact that you're putting her business out there. Tearing down another black woman. Uh-uh, that's what we not gonna do. Dayla, thank you for putting on this course. I hope you watch this review and you take in the improvement. So that's how I feel. I feel like this is the best, honest, and most real review of the YouTube Hustle course. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. One more thing. Oh, this video is about to be long. There was a YouTube Hustle course challenge, okay? So um, I'll post the rules up here somewhere. The rules will be up here on the screen. So you have to post a video 
and you have to have certain hashtags, things in your title, things in your tags or whatever, and you have to submit it by a certain time. So the rules were submitted by a certain time. A lot of people submitted it late and she extended the deadline. I feel like that should have been a no cut kill because that would have been less videos in there, less videos you had to watch. When she chose the winner, she chose it with a randomizer. So I feel like what's the point of having rules if you weren't going to like actually pick somebody and watch the video? And it wasn't, it wasn't until the end where one of her moderators from the group, that's when her communication got really good. I think her name was Lori or Lauren Halsley or something like that. Like she was responding to people's questions and I think that's something that we needed from the beginning but um Jayla did put together a playlist the YouTube hustle channel so there's 145 videos in this playlist so out of the 900 plus people that were in the course only 145 people participated in the challenge and I know some people dropped out of the course before um it was over because they just it wasn't for them and there were certain criteria that you had to meet and she put it in a randomizer and it wasn't told from the beginning how the person would be chosen and I feel like there she could have used the people that she had teach the classes she could have used other youtubers she could have used her friends and reported them like judging or judging or something like I feel like that would have been a better way to choose the um, winner because the winner winner was randomized but the winner that she chose was somebody who she always shouted out like in the comments when we were watching videos. And I was just like, that's a little bit sus. Like I don't like the way the video was, um, the winner was chosen. Um, congratulations to that person, but I don't like the way the winner was chosen. And then also she picked the time to pick the, um, the winners and then people, some people couldn't make it like on to the live video where she chose the winners and then the people who were watching I went back and watched the video people were like oh if they're not here they can't win what I pay my money like no that's not okay so I just think there just needs to be a better way of for that like you had us go through this thing I spent a week and some change on this one video no like I spent two weeks on it I spent two weeks on this video like taking pictures editing pictures editing my video editing content like and I just feel like I got slighted. That is it for today's video beauties. Thank you so much for watching. But before you go, make sure you go down below and click that subscribe button. Then right next to that, click that bell notification button so that you never miss when I post. Like I always say, it's free, it's easy, and it's fun. All right, I'll see you in the next one beauties. Bye. No comparison. <laughs>